Hey guys, welcome to another Hairbrain Live. I'm Michael Petsiewicz from Shane Hair Education. We have the beautiful James Akers behind the camera. I'm the creative director, director of Shane Hair Education. And we're going to do a really cool haircut for you today. It's a pixie variation. It's going to be something that has quite flat graduation in the back and work into some flat graduation on the sides. Afterwards, we're going to be layering through the sides just to remove the weight. And then we're going to have a long disconnected front. So it's going to be a really modern, long variation of a pixie haircut. And what I'll do is after I've cut this first section now, I'm going to show you guys the sectioning pattern that we're going to be working through. But as you can see, for that first section, we've got a really nice flat graduation. And that's perfectly where we want to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the sectioning pattern that we've started with. So we've separated this haircut into four major zones. So what we have is we have a square section here in the back. We have a square section here on the side. And we have another square section on the top. So what I'll do is I'll just curl this down and I'll start to move the bow around for you. So what you can see is the square section here. We have one square section that we've worked through in the back. Another one on the side, and then our square section through the top. So we have four major zones here within this haircut. And what we've started with is we've started to create a really nice flat graduation in the back. And the way we've done this is we're taking vertical sections and we're cutting them in a very flat cutting angle. And what I mean by this is we're taking them very flat to the head and not at a heavy angle. So because they're very flat to the head, it creates this very modern, very flat graduation. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking vertical sections which run across the head. And I'm going to be over directing slightly to the previous, therefore creating a nice square flat graduation in the back. So let us know where you're tuning in from, guys. Let us know how you're doing today. We're really excited to show you this haircut. Oh, so Maria says hello. Hi, Maria. Hi, Maria. We've got people tuning in from Slovenia, Germany, from New York, all over the shop. Amazing, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. So for those of you that are just joining us, we're doing a really cool pixie variation. It's going to have some quick square graduation in it. It's going to have some layering. It's going to have a long disconnected top. Very, very modern look. A lot of fun to do. Something you can do that's a bit salon creative when you're in your salon and working on your clients. So what we're doing here is we're starting from the top. And the reason we start from the top is you have a tendency to create something more flat when you work from the top of the head down. If you work from the bottom towards the top, you always have a tendency to create something a little bit heavier. And because we want this to be quite flat to the head, we're going to start from the top and work our way down. So you can see that my fingers start from the top. And as I'm working down, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn my fingers to the bottom because it's very hard to connect it all the way down when we're working from the top only. So as we get more towards the bottom of the head, we're just turning our fingers and we're creating that nice flat graduation all the way down. Okay, so we've got people tuning in from Malta, Switzerland, Idaho, Kansas. Beautiful. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in guys. Don't forget if you do enjoy the video, please like and share. We appreciate it. We love joining you guys. We do Hairbrain Lives every month. We've been doing them for two and a half years now. Really love being here with you. So anyone who's watched it before knows it's a very interactive thing. You can have a joke with us. You can comment. You can like. You can ask us any question you like. We'll be more than happy to answer them. There's no such thing as a stupid question. Only stupid answers, so don't worry. If anyone's <laughs> going to say anything stupid, it's going to be me. So what we're doing is, again, we're just taking these vertical sections, if you can see, from the top of the head down. And what we're going to be doing is, as we're taking these vertical sections, we're going to be connecting them to the previous in order to create something that's square across, but has some very flat graduation from the top to the bottom. So again, working our fingers from the top of the head, just carefully of our over direction that we're not under over directing therefore creating round we're not over directing too much 
therefore created something triangular. We just want to see something that's nice and squared across. So if we want, we can just come across horizontally and just check that we're working something square from the top, and that's what we want to see. So once we're happy with that, we're coming again, back down, making sure we're keeping a consistent cutting angle, keeping it nice and flat. And as we said, when we get to this point, what we really want to do is then turn our fingers the other way so we can grab all those little hairs from the bottom. So this is something really fun that I like to do. A lot of creative cuts of mine are based on some form of square graduation. It's a very strong look and it works with corners. So what you'll see is as we work through this haircut, you're going to start to see the use of corners within the haircut, which is something really important that creates the squareness within the haircut. So Cassie says, hey, Michael. Ben's tuned in, says, hey, guys. Hey, Ben, how so, you doing? Nice to see you again, bro, so soon. <laughs> so what we're coming now is we're coming to our last section in the back and what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be keeping that consistency moving the hair back keeping the corner there so a nice square shape along with that flat graduation and we're not going to work on the sides yet we're going to finish the back first and then afterwards we're going to move on to the sides as well so again a lot of repetition what we're doing is we're moving the hair towards the previously cut section we're looking to keep that nice flat cutting angle so remember if you can't see your guideline you know something's going to go wrong so i always say if the guideline is not like a smack in the face <laughs> you might end up with it wrong it really has to be that clear and that clean to you you really have to be able to make sure that you're hitting your guideline every time without fail Okay, so a few comments. We've got George Achilios. I don't know if I said that right. Hey, George. George. <laughs> hey, George. How are you doing? Ben's stalking you. Good to hear, Ben. Um, uh, Kellen's asked, do you use cutting lotion to keep the hair wet or do you use a spray bottle? So we use both. Um, at this point, what we do is we do have a bit of cutting lotion in there. I'll just show you what we're using. We've got a bit of the leave-in conditioner for milkshake. This is our cutting lotion, our primer. We popped it in the back before we started. And then after that, once we put it in once, we then use water there afterwards. So at this point, what I've done is I've created something that's quite flat graduation and it's looking to be square. Now the truth is it's not perfectly square because I haven't cross-checked it yet. So when I come through, I want to cross-check it and make sure that it's square. But what I don't want to do, I don't want to cross-check this side and then when I do the second side, if it's wrong, have to cross-check the first side again. So rather than checking this side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight into the second side, finish it, and then what I'll do after that is I'll cross-check it as a whole finished piece in the back. So again, I finish one side. I'm not going to cross-check it. I'm going to come through to the second side. I'm going to finish that, and then I'm going to cross-check it as a finished article from the back. And so for those of you that are just joining us, this is going to be a pixie variation with a really nice flat graduation in the back, flat graduation that's square on the sides. We'll then add some layering through the top to give a nice disconnected sweat fringe. So I think this is a really cool haircut to do in the salon. It's something quite modern, something that people are asking for a lot these days. So guys, if you're just tuning in, let us know where you're tuning in from. We always love to hear that. We've got Dennis saying, hi guys, love the sectioning. Thanks, Dennis. Um, Ivan, hi, how are you doing? Uh, quick question, Michael. So how do you come up with this sectioning? So this sectioning is based on a classic form of squareness. So the classic form of squareness of square graduation is something we teach as part of our classic fundamental haircuts is square graduation. And what I like to do is take those very core cool square shapes and then break them because what happens is when you do something square, it always has structure and strength to it. So anything that has structure and strength to it is a really kind of dynamic, strong looking haircut. And then how you break it there afterwards, you can create so many different things with it. So just by having that very strong core allows me to then have some fun with it and bisect it a bit. You know, it's almost like when you do a very clean bun and then you pull out pieces to make it messy. It's a little bit like that. It's creating a very strong base and then having the ability to then break it to make it something more fun, more modern and more interesting. So I find a lot of my haircuts are based on classic haircuts that we teach in our geometric course. 
that are then tweaked, broken, and changed in whatever way we want and the client wants. So I always find those are the most fun things, to have something with structure and then something that works across. And because square is a very specific shape with corners, we have a very strong baseline of how we achieve it. And so what we're doing here is we're starting the squareness by creating the back. And then what we'll do is once we go onto the sides, you'll be able to see where the corners are placed. So these sections we have here, which separate the back from the side, is where our corners are going to be placed. And we've done this by measuring the head shape. And what I'll do is before I move on, I'll show you our little secret of how we found the corners within the head shape. Beautiful. So we've got people tuning in from Ohio, from Maine, from Trinidad. Um, got Christine asking, where are you located? So we're based in London. So we have our London Academy here. It's about one minute walk from Oxford Circus, right in the center of London. So if anyone's in London, come pop in, say hello, meet the team. We'd love to have you guys in. As soon as the world opens up and we can travel again, <laughs> we'd love to see you wherever you are in the world. <laughs> Trinidad sounds amazing. Trinidad would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's very cold here in London at the minute. It was snowing yesterday, actually. <laughs> so Dennis said, so it really follows the head shape. Yeah, it actually works against the head shape. So in a way, it's weird because it follows the head shape, but at the same time, it actually works against the head shape as well. So what we're going to do is, if I can find my other phone, voila, they always disappear in our pocket. So what we do is we find the five major corners that create this four fundamental zones within the head. So what we do is we place the first cone on the back, and the second cone, when this is not in the way, we place over the top in order to find the first corner that sits at the top of the head. We can then come from the side over the top and we find the second corner which is the second corner at the back same on the other side as well when we work through so what that's found is it's found that first major corners here that we have which is these two on either side and then the one over the top so that's your one zone in the back that's your center zone in the back what we then do is we work from that that we have in the back and we try and find the one on the top so we place the cone over the top of the head and we find the next one and then we come across the other side and we find the next one and so what this does is it gives us those two corners at the top and then what you have is your four zones one two three and then what we have already in the back our fourth one and what i've done is i've just created a very flat cutting angle and I work across square, so all the way across square. So each time I did it, I over directed to the previous and I made sure that my cutting angle was very flat. Now what I'm looking is I think my technique is nice, my graduation is nice because I've worked vertically down, but perhaps the shape is not perfect yet. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come through and start to cross check it horizontally to make sure that it's a nice square shape. I believe I'm a little bit longer on this side, so this is my chance to now refine the haircut and make sure we have something that's quite nice and square across the back. If that's making sense, guys, give us a thumbs up, give us a like, let us know if it doesn't make sense. Me and James will be more than happy to go over anything for you and explain things again. Anushka said, never saw such a precise and clean cut like this before. Thanks for the share. Oh, it's from Mauritius. Thank you so much. That's so kind of you. That's so kind of you. If you do like these videos, we have about 15 on our website right now, and we're uploading new ones starting again from this week. So if you want, you go on slatehair.com. That's slatehair.com. And what we're going to be doing is we've got about 15 free videos up there. And we'll be uploading new ones each week as well. So what I'm doing now is I'm starting to work across horizontally. And I'm taking the hair up. And I'm just making sure that in my fingers from left to right, the hair is nice and square across. So at this point, if I've made any mistakes, I'm not worried because I have the chance to fix it. And as I said, I thought I was a bit longer on this side. And I am indeed. And now what I'm not doing here is I'm not worrying about the hair from the top to the bottom. 
I'm just trying to make sure from left to right that I have a nice square angle. That's so a I'm question from about. Mary Fran says, is this a boo fade haircut? Which I can't say I've ever heard of. I've never heard of a boo fade. So but sorry, Mary, may, I don't know. May, maybe it is. You'll have to tell us at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of this haircut, if it's a boo fade, then you tell us, in the, and then guess what? I've just created a boo fade without knowing what a boo fade is, which oh, I think yeah, that would, would be, be quite an achievement, actually. As well. <laughs> so what I've done is I've just worked through the center, and I've just made sure from left to right that everything is nice and square. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to work through the shorter side first and make sure this is square across, and then I'll come on the longer side and refine it. And so what I feel is very important is always when you're doing this, is always refine the short side first because what happens is if you refine the long side first and then the short side what might actually happen is you might not be able to connect it so by knowing which side is the short side and then cutting it first you have a true guideline to connect the long side to does that make sense everyone just let me know if not and i'll go over it because i think it's very important if one side is long make sure you refine the short side because if you refine the long side first and then you end up cutting the short side again it's going to be wrong then you have to refine the long side again so i think always find the short side refine the short side first and then connect it to the long side so i hope that makes sense guys great advice cullen said and gerard gerard said hey looking great slate oh thanks so much for her it's amazing so yeah just really nice so i think for me we all make mistakes while we're cutting. I think that's the more normal best part of it. I don't think anyone really cuts like a perfect machine. And if they do, great for them, but that's not me. So what I need to do is think about where I'm most likely to make mistakes and where I have the best opportunity to refine it and fix it from. And by understanding the, where I'm most likely to make a mistake and where's the easiest way for me to connect it, I actually have the best chance of creating a nice haircut quickly, which is really what you want in a salon situation. You want to be able to refine your haircut quickly without having to go back over things so many times. So, so would you say you always cross-check your haircuts? Yeah, I do. So at Slate, we have a really nice way of looking at it, I think. We have something called technique, which is your top to bottom, and we have something called your shape, which is your left to right. And what happens is when I cut vertically, I make sure that I cross-check my shape horizontally so I know what I'm looking for. When I cut horizontally, I'm checking left to right. Now, let's say I cut this haircut from left to right. Then what I would do is I would cross-check vertically and I would only check from the top to the bottom that I have a clean technique. So I'm checking my technique. So if I'm checking things vertically, I'm checking my technique, my graduation, my line, my layering. If I'm checking horizontally, I'm checking my round, my square or my triangle. So I'm really conscious of what I'm cross-checking. And I think that makes life easier because I feel like a lot of times people are cross-checking, but they're not always 100% what they're supposed to be cross-checking when they work. And by working like this, it gives you a very, very clear picture of what you're supposed to be seeing within your work. So we've got a couple of questions. So Maria asked, do you check each section on the base, which is a great question. Yeah, so it depends what I've done. So I normally try and do the same over direction and the same elevation as when I did the original. So as an example, because naturally this hair will sit on the side, that's where it will lie naturally. By pulling it back, what I'm doing is I'm over directing it back off the base to be where I naturally cut it when I first came across. So when I first did this haircut, I was pulling the head back. So it had this over direction. When I cross check, I'm not pulling it here, but again, I'm pulling it to the same place in the back. And so that's a great way for me to think about it, that I'm trying to have the same elevation and the same over direction when I work. So you want to check it where you cut it originally. Exactly. And then Jabari, I think I pronounced that right. Let me know if I didn't. Um, what is the haircut name? So the haircut, man, this is a bit of a pixie variation, but if I had to give you a name, I would say it's a square graduated haircut. So it's square mm -hmm. graduated. What I'm then doing is I'm doing a triangle layer through the top that's going to sit longer, but I'm also going to do some very cheeky internal disconnection, which is going to be layered internally. 
So we would just call this a pixie variation or a long swept pixie, but in reality it's square graduation with internal disconnection with a triangle layer through the top for those of you that are a little bit more technical with it. It's looking beautiful already. Thank you so much. So what I've done is I've finished the back and now I'm going to cross check it again when I've dried it, but for now I'm happy with the fact that it's balanced and we have a nice length across the back. Now you can see that it's a really nice flat sitting graduation through the back. So, I've got a question for you, yes. sorry. Um, so Nandita said, could you please explain why the corners are longer than the rest? Which again is a great question. I don't understand it. So why the corners are longer than the rest? So why, uh, so why are the corners longer than the rest? Yeah. So if we're going to do something square, what it means is we're working against the head shape. So maybe if you come from the top, James. So what we can see is the center, from the center of the head, the hair is actually much shorter now, in order for this hair to connect to this point, it has to be longer. So in order for the hair to be all pulled back, it actually goes shorter in the middle and longer towards the sides. And what happens here is this is the widest point of the head. And by having the widest point of the head shorter and the bit that recedes the most longer, what you're creating is a much flatter, uniform silhouette. So we're looking at the silhouette, the way the hair sits when it's combed down, it looks more flat and more balanced because what we have is we have shorter in the middle and longer towards the corners where the hair recedes the most or the head recedes the most in. So we're slimming the so widest point of the head. Slimming the widest point of the head. If we had the widest point of the head longer and the rest shorter, it would create more of a rounded feel and therefore make the head stick out more. And that's not something we want to do. So it's a very nice question actually. Very nice. So you can see how we found the corner here using our combs. And what we're doing is we're working with the natural corner of the head to then start creating our squareness to the sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a little clip here just so we don't lose the sides. And what we'll do is we're trying to keep that corner because that corner is going to be my guideline for the sides as well. And I'll explain that in a little bit more detail now. So where that section is, is that where your corner is going to be? Yes, correct. So where we have this point here is where my corner is going to be. So this hair here is going to be the guideline for the sides. Nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift. Up. up she goes. There we go. Right <laughs> now. So the truth is the head was a little bit forward when I cut the back. And what happens is when the head is tilted a little bit more forward, you have a tendency to create more heavy graduation. So when the head is more forward, it's ten a tendency to be heavier. If the head is upright, you have a tendency to go a bit flatter. So depending on what you want to do, you can either have the head up or down. You can encourage yourself to do different things with it. So I hope that makes sense. So the more down the head is, the more likely you are to create something heavier. The more head the upright is, the more likely you are to create something flatter. Beautiful. So what we're doing is we're taking a little section across the side that is nice and square. So we're going to say it comes nice and square through the side. And we're going to start creating the side. Now the main difference here is when we did the back, we were using vertical sections. Now when we're coming to create the side, what we're going to do is we're going to be working horizontal sections. So as we work through, each section is going to come horizontally and it's going to connect what we're doing here to the length we have in the back. So the back is the guideline for the sides. So what I do is I take a little section from the back. It's my guideline. I put in a little clip so I don't lose my section. I lift the hair up and I keep my fingers square to the head. And I start to cut in. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually making it a little bit longer, just so we have a little bit more to play with in the corner. So we can see that the corner is here and we haven't cut the back. We've just used the back as a guideline towards the front. And we kept it a little bit long so we have a little bit more to play with at the end. If we want, we can remove it or we can have it longer as a little kind of alternative feature, as it were. So Kellen's asked a question, which is, could you use this technique leaving the length slightly longer for a pixie? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, the great thing about a, a lot of haircuts, I believe, 
is the fact that you can do the exact same sectioning, elevation, over direction with the same haircut, slightly different lengths, and all of a sudden it becomes a new haircut. It looks completely different. So I believe that just by following the sectioning pattern and changing the angle slightly from what you're doing, you'll be able to create a vast array of different looks from it, which is really exciting, I think, to be able to change your haircut that much just from changing the choice of length. So I, I believe choice of length is almost everything within a haircut sometimes. That was a great question. So I hope that answered your question, yeah. Kellen. Let it, us know. If it doesn't answer your question, just write us in the comments and we'll go over it again. You know, we're more than happy to do that. So I've noticed that you've changed your body position there, Michael. So, is there a reason for that? Yeah. Normally what I would be doing is I would be standing right here in front. So if you come maybe more here, I would be standing literally in front. But because I actually want you guys to see it, I'm standing a little bit on the side. But because we pull the head towards ourselves, the easiest thing to make sure you're square is to stand in front of the head, looking at the ear and making sure you are perpendicular to it. And what you can see is each time I take a section, I'm taking a little bit from the back and I'm using the back as my guideline for the side. But each time working through, looking just to create that nice squareness and because we're using the back as a guideline, we're following the same elevation. So what we have is we have a consistent guideline from the back to the side. And what you'll see is you'll start to see a corner building here. We've left it a little bit longer in the corner. We can remove that afterwards if you want. Or for those of you that are a little more arty, you can, or the client's a little bit more arty, you can <laughs> leave that in as a nice little feature. So what you're seeing now is you're starting to see the horizontal sections really coming into play and really showing themselves. So lovely little horizontal sections across. Don't forget each time to remove the hair and take a little bit of a guideline. Now the reason why we don't just let all the hair fall down is because we don't want to lose sight of where our corner is. So the corner is where we're taking the guideline from the back. Now it's quite easy for me because I can tell the difference between this hair and this hair. When the haircut's already a bit shorter on your client, sometimes, it can be a little bit harder to distinguish where the side ends, where the corner is, uh, and where the back and the front start. So what's the reason you've moved to horizontal sections here and not kept it vertical? So actually, when you talk about square shapes, it's actually quite hard to maintain a square shape. So I find when you're cutting vertically, it can be very hard to maintain the squareness. And what happens is sometimes your technique is nice, the graduation, but the shape's not really perfect. So once I've actually established the graduation in the back, which is the hardest thing, and I've done it vertically and then cross-checked horizontally, I actually have a guideline of the graduation I want. So if we did this graduation and we pull it over, we've already decided the graduation. So we're just following the guideline that we have from the back all the way up towards the top. So the length in the side is decided from length in the back. Nice. So the length that you've cut the occipital bone in the back is the length you're going to have around the front of the face. So that's why I find it's much easier to work across horizontally once you've established the type of graduation you're going to have and the lengths you're going to have. So I hope that answers it nicely. So when you cut the back, you're actually thinking about the length at the front. So the, because you're cutting something square, the length at the back dictates the length of the front. So actually, once you've done the back, you've already decided the length in the front. And it's very hard to change it if you want to keep something purely square. If you don't want it to be square, then you have an option to change it. But if you want to keep something that's purely square, you end up having to actually follow that length and therefore it's already decided for you. So I hope that makes sense, guys. Give us a thumbs up, give us a like, give it a share if this is all making sense. If not, hit us up with a lovely little question. We'll be happy to answer. And you can really start to see the squareness building now within that haircut. If I can graduation really hear, building. You can really see where that corner is sitting. Beautiful. Cool. So don't forget to let us know where you're tuning in from. For those of you that are just joining, we're doing a pixie variation. It's going to have some square graduation in the back and the sides followed by a triangle layer through the top, which is going to come into this lovely swept fringe. So it's going to be all tightly shaped, all flat graduation square, followed by a nice little longer fringe that's swept in the front, or, or long bands, I don't know what you call it. You know, <laughs> long bands. Uh, 
Long bangs in America. What do you call a swept fringe in America? Let us know. <laughs> Teach us your terminology. Cool. So we're just coming across following a nice square cutting angle. So if we look from left to right, we can see that the cone is really showing you where that square is. Just that we're pulling it around each thing. And so working across a nice square, we're using the back as a guideline. So once we've created the back, we pull it over to the side and that creates the length that we're doing and connecting it in. So, you know, if you just keep working this way, you end up with square graduation. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be kicking it a little bit into something more modern by adding some disconnection and then a swept bang layer fringe. <laughs> hanging on the terminology. Swept fringe side bangs. There side we go. Side bangs, there we go. So we'll have some nice long side bangs for this <laughs> just to show you a little variation. Cool. So you can see that pulling the hair from the back where the corner was into it. And what we'll do is we'll show you again how we found the corners for those of you that are just tuning in. By the way, I'm Michael Pizzolides. This is James Akers behind the camera. James is our UK creative director. And we're just taking you through this cool haircut. We're going to do a little bit of a recap once I've finished this last section. And then I'm also going to do the same thing on the second side. So if you're just tuning in, you haven't missed anything, we'll recap the back and then we're going to do the same thing on the second side. Perfect. Uh, there's a question from Francesco. Yeah. Do you have any advice to get the elevation wrong? Do you have any tricks you tend to use? So the elevation should really be dictated by the corner. So what happens is if you pull the hair too far down, you don't have a clean guideline. If you pull it too high up, you can see that what's going to happen is you're going to end up starting to cut some of the back that you've already cut. So there's your guideline and you can see that the hair is not clean and you're going to cut it. So if you start going down, what happens is that starts to connect. And what you want to do is you want to see that connect so that you see the back is being connect to the side. That's how you know you have consistent elevation. If you go too far down, you can't see a guideline and it's a very messy line because you've pulled it too far down. If you go too high up, what happens is you end up cutting into your guideline. So you can see the guideline there. So the only way to cut this is to actually comb it until you can see your guideline and you just pull it to the point where it's about to connect and then you work your way across. So that way you've got your consistent elevation. So the back, again, so the back actually dictates to you where your elevation should be. So you've already decided your elevation from when you cut the back. So remember the back dictates the front because it's square. So by cutting the back, you've already decided the length in the front. So you just have to follow the consistent elevation. Okay. And if that answers the question. Let us know guys. Give us a thumbs up, give us a shout. We're just about to do the last section now from the top and you can really start to see that squareness come into it now. So I've got a question from Jermaine. She says she's an apprentice and left-handed and struggles struggles with cutting. Do you have any tips? Yeah, definitely. I think the, the thing about this as well is you have to understand the really basics of cutting before you start thinking of where's the best place to stand, left and right. For me, it's one of those things that when you have a clear understanding of what type of haircut you're going to do, what shape is it, and the balance that you're looking for, whether you stand on the left or the right or how you use your hands can really change things. So what I mean by that, it's not just about where you're cutting from, but also having the same movement in the fingers. So whether you're left-handed or right-handed, I'll give you an example. If we're going to layer here and I'm pulling the hair up, the best thing to do when we're doing the other side is to actually maintain that and stand in the back. So we can see that the fingers haven't changed from when I was doing one side to the other. The worst thing you can do is work in this way and then changing your finger position. So your fingers work from the outside to the inside. Then all of a sudden, it's very hard to get the same kind of elevation, the same kind of balance. So for me, it's those things when you're talking about left and right, it's just maintaining the same fingers either on the outside or the inside, on both sides. Clean, concise sectioning of where your technique is, in other words, where your graduation is, and then your shape. 
if you're creating something square, rounded, or triangular. And I think those basics of cutting can allow you to work through your haircuts very methodically as well. Because even for me, I have the same kind of issues, even though I'm right-handed, just from not really fully understanding the mechanics of cutting and what the difference is between the technique and the shape. So it's a very large one, but what I would recommend is check out some of our videos on our website at slatehair.com. We give some really easy to follow techniques. So guys, what we've done is we've done a square graduation in the back, and it sits nice and flat. We've worked through square graduation on the sides as well. So I don't know if anyone can see the kind of corner that we have placed here. So we can really see the corner coming out. So we did the back flat, the sides flat. We created a nice square shape, and we've done this by creating graduations. So it's a really nice graduation. It's created square across. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do the other side. So for those of you that are just tuning in, what we'll do is we'll show you how we did this. We started by finding our corners. So we put the first corner from the top with our comb, finding where the corner is from the top. And then we moved on to the sides and we found the corners from the sides. We did this on both sides. And so what we had was we had one, two, three, four sections. We created it with some nice graduation. It then came across from left to right square. And then we did the same thing using what we had done on the back. We moved it over to the side and then we created a nice squareness on the side leaving this lovely corner we have there as well. What I'm going to do is the same thing on the second side, and then I'm going to cross-check, and I'm going to do a bit of internal disconnected layering as well before we have the front swept bangs. Front swept bangs, beautiful. Front swept bangs, cool. So if we were, let's say we're talking about the slate courses, yeah. at what point would you be doing this yes. sort of haircut? So for example, with Jamae, who's an apprentice, yeah. etc., would you suggest that she came on this yeah. course or? So what this course is, is it's actually what we call abstract, which is more of our salon creative. Abstract is more of our salon creative. But this haircut is based on the classic haircuts we learn with us on our geometric courses. So if we were going to continue this haircut the same way I've done now and not layer it, it would be a classic square graduation. And that we learn on our fundamental geometric courses. And so geometric is the hardest classic haircuts. What I'm teaching you today is one of our abstract, which is a salon contemporary course. It's basically taking what you've learned in geometric and mixing it and breaking it. And so this is a more advanced one. So what you want to do is you want to learn the classic fundamental cutting so you can learn how to do a perfect square graduation before you learn how to break it in the way that I'm doing and making it something a little bit more tailored, a little bit more modern. Cool. So what we've got is we've got the second side. And we've cut the back and established with a nice bit of graduation coming along nice and square. What we're going to use is we're going to use the back as a guideline for how we're going to cut now this square on this side. So we're using the back as a guide to cut square now on the second side. So I'm just repeating what I've done on the first side, now on the second side. So if you guys are enjoying this, give us a thumbs up, give us a shout, tell us how we're doing. If you want us to go over anything, let us know. Be more than happy. Evelyn says hi. Hi Evelyn. Uh, guys, sorry if it's a bit quiet. I think I'm, maybe I don't know, maybe I have my hand over the mic or something. So let us know if this is any better. Oh no, guys, sorry, maybe I need to shout a little bit more. <laughs> maybe I need to not smoke so many cigarettes, get my lung capacity <laughs> back. All right, beautiful. So what we're doing is we're going to do the same thing. We're elevating slightly more in the first one just to give a little bit more length so we have something to play with at the end afterwards. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working through this with some nice consistent elevation. So remember the back is what creates the length on the side. So once you've created the length in the back, it's actually dictated to you the length that you're then going to see on the sides. Just moving the hair out the way. Coming through. So what we've got here is we've got the length we're about to create on the side. And what we want is we want consistent guidelines. So what this means is we're taking a little bit of hair 
from the back and we're using the back as a guideline from the side. So when we lift the hair up, what we want to see is that we're using the length in the back as a guideline for the side. So you can see here, this is the corner that is actually dictated by the shape of the head. So on my mannequin, the corners here. On a human, it might be a bit further forward, a bit further back. This is why we measure it in order to find out the true corner. So we're working exactly with the shape of the head to find out where the true corner is for this specific individual we're working on. Okay. It's a lot of fun when you do it on your clients or your models because you really start to see the difference in head shape on different people because the corner is always located somewhere slightly different depending on who you're working on. I suppose it makes them feel nice knowing that you're doing something bespoke yeah. to their head shape. But the right? truth is not just that, the haircuts look so much better. Yeah. You know, the truth is that when you start working with head shape, you start really detailing something that suits someone. So if you imagine the hair, when it falls, it molds around the head shape. So if you create something that's perfectly tailored for that head shape, it's going to sit even better. And we were talking about this before, weren't we, James? That head shape is almost like the undertone that a colorist would think of. So when people do color, they always think about the undertone that they're going to work with. But a lot of cutters don't think about the head shape as if it was undertone. As in, what is this head shape? And what am I going to have to do to change my angle in order to get what I want on this head shape? So if I wanted a specific angle, so if I show you on this side, if I want a specific angle and the head shape sticks out a lot, I might have to go flatter in order to maintain the same shape that we have now. Yeah. Maybe the head shape is very flat. Therefore, in order to get this angle, I have to go for something heavier because when it falls, it will fall flatter. So you actually have to think about what shape of head the person has and then think about the end result you want to get and therefore what angles have to change in order to get that head shape. So I hope that makes sense. It's something we go into a lot of detail when we lecture about hair cutting. You know, that the hair always molds around the head shape. So you have to think about the undertone, what the head shape is before you start cutting. Because you have to think about what you want and how you're going to get there. So I hope this is making sense, guys. Give, give us a thumbs up give if us it a is. Shout, give us a thumbs up. Jame said it. I will definitely look at the courses. I think I've finally found someone who can explain things, explain things properly. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Sir. If you want to just drop us a message, um, Jame, after this, uh, we we can get back to you and we can have a chat about anything. Okay. So you know, for me, I spent many many years being very confused about cutting, uh, many many years. And so for me, when I started to learn properly with my partner Gregory when we started Slate, all of a sudden things just became clearer for me and easier. And I used to be very scared doing clients. I used to be scared that I wasn't going to be able to achieve what the client wanted. You know, they might ask for something and I thought, shit, am I going to be able to do it? How do I do that? You know? And it was quite scary for me. And once I started to understand the mechanics of cutting and I realized that there was a method of doing things that could give you quality results each time, like in a way of looking at almost like a science, like physics, everything became clearer for me. And there wasn't as many questions, there wasn't as many times when you thought, is this going to be right or is it going to be wrong? And so it was a really, really nice way of working for me. It made things a lot easier for me, a lot clearer to work with. So I think that's what we want to do, you know, we really want to give something that's easy to understand and effective to use, you know, understanding that we're human and we all make mistakes. And where are we most likely to make the mistakes? And where are we not, you know? So I think those are really, really important. So a couple of questions that have come in. Um, can you make one side long, one side short? Yeah, you can. I mean, it's not going to be a perfectly square shape. It's not going to be a perfectly square shape, but you could definitely we were talking about this yesterday. Yeah, we were. <laughs> so, you know, you can, you can make one side longer, one side shorter, but what will happen is when you look at it from the back, if you connect it across horizontally, is because we're doing something balanced, if you look at it across horizontally, it's square. If you have one side longer, what will happen is the back will be at a bit of an angle. So it'll end up looking like that all the way across, which is cool, but it's not going to be perfectly square. And again, that comes into more of an abstract thing 
we teach that in our salon creative course, our abstract course, a little bit more about uh, asymmetry and creating balance in asymmetry. You know, it's something we, we really talk about in much more detail because humans look much better with symmetry. So sometimes when you put in asymmetry, you have to think, are you making the face more visually balanced or less visually balanced? So it's a really good question and it's something you know we talk about a lot as well. But yeah, asymmetric looks are definitely something you can work on as well. Okay, so with your elevation now, the same as the other side, you're yeah. using that corner to figure out where to put it out to, yeah. is that right? Using yeah, the back. If you come on this side and you're just coming across, so you're working through nice and square, but you're using the back as a little bit of a guideline to come across as well as you work. So just taking that back, always having a little chest as you go. And as far as the outlines to this now, yeah. is this exactly how they're going to be? Or? So it totally depends on you. If you decide to leave the outlines like this, they'll be a bit more natural, a little bit softer. You can then break them more, so they're more shattered and then more broken, or a little bit more, as we like to say, technically fucked up. You know? <laughs> but depending on what you want to do with that, you can either um, leave them like that so more natural, you can break them more, so they're a little bit more shattered, or you can cut them really clean. So you know those proper geometric cutout ones with a very, very clean outline? You can also do that with them. So it really does depend what you want to do at the end of this, whether you want to leave it natural, or whether you want to define it more clean or more messy. So one thing by doing internal first, like we are here, what you're doing is you're really allowing it to, to you're really allowing yourself to decide afterwards. So when you whenever you do a, an outline first, you kind of kind of can't decide afterwards what you want to do with it. But by doing it the way we're doing, you can allow yourself after that to decide how messy or how clean you want it. Okay, so question from Ashley. What scissors are you using and what do you like about them? So I like these scissors, they're your sucker. And the reason I like them is because they're small like nail clippers. So, <laughs> so for me, what I'll show you is they are a four and a half, a little four and a half. And I like them because I have very bony fingers. So I don't know if you can see the gap there yeah, in between can, my yeah. fingers. So if I'm pulling something up, and the hair's in there, what happens is because there's a hole, it falls out. And then what I do is I cut a clean line. And when I cross check it, it's really long because it's fallen out. So my haircut, instead of being straight, ends up being wonky. So what I do is I only cut with that much of my finger because I can't because of the hole there. So this scissor is perfect for me because it fits just in that little place there that I know I still have tension in. If you've got very big sausage fingers, get some slightly bigger scissors but <laughs> otherwise these are perfect for me and i always find the smaller they are the more accurate it is i always think of it like this if you went to see your surgeon and he brought out a butcher's knife or he brought out a very very small little surgical knife which one would you prefer probably the one <laughs> that was a bit smaller because you know deep in your heart that the smaller the scissors are the more accurate the haircut is and that's just another way of looking at it Cool. So, I've cut the back, we did a nice flat graduation, we then we came across and worked something nice and flat horizontally. We then cut the sides in with again a nice flat graduation and we connected it horizontally. So we can see that the corner is placed here within the haircut. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to cross check the sides. But what I want to do is, before I start cross-checking it, I actually want to do a cheeky little bit of disconnection. So because the top is going to fall longer over this, what I want to do is I want to slim the sides down. And so because I want to slim the sides down, I want to do an internal disconnection inside. And then I'll come through and I'll start cross-checking. So what I'll do is, I'll come from here. And what we're going to do is we're going to lift the hair up. And we're looking to connect the back and take the front shorter. So what by doing this, what we're doing is we're lifting the hair up, we're leaving the length in the back, and we're going to cut the front shorter. 
So we're creating a short layer inside this haircut. And this is just going to slim the front down. Because a lot of the times I find you know, these haircuts always look better when the face is a little bit slimmer. Okay? So what we've done is we've lifted the hair up and we've created this layer inside. Now, the reason this is disconnected is because the top hair that I haven't cut yet is going to sit over the top of it and therefore it's going to be disconnected. So what I want to do is I want to do the same thing on the second side and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to connect it internally. Okay. So again, just lifting the head completely vertical and we're just slimming the front, taking the weight out the front, creating this lovely little layer internally. So it was a classic square graduation until this point. So what we have now is, what you have to remember is anytime you cut hair one place and then another place, when you look inside, you're always going to find a corner. And corners are weight. And I don't want to have weight within, sorry, Rob, within this haircut. So what I want to do is I want to sling this. Therefore, I need to remove the corner. So starting from the front, I'm just taking a vertical section. I'm going to lift this head up, and there's the corner. Now this corner is going to create weight. So remember, if you cut one place and you cut another place, in the middle you're going to find a corner. The corner is weight, and the corner makes the hair stick out. And I don't want the hair to stick out. I want it to sit nice and flat. So I'm going to work through these sections, vertical sections, working from the front towards the back. And remember, the back's connected. So I'm actually going to end up having less and less hair to cut as I work through this. So okay. we're using over direction here? No, this is just kind of on the base. Um, but what should happen is I think you're using a very natural slight over direction forward just to try and make sure you're not cutting too much, you know, just to make sure that you don't want to cut the back off. So you're just being very gentle. Does that make sense, guys, what I'm saying, what we're doing here? We're just removing the corner to just make it a bit flatter there. So just so considerate. Sorry, love. <laughs> Listen, got to be polite to the customers. You know what I mean? It's a bit of bedside manner, they say. Yes, beautiful. Makes sense. Thank you for explaining. Beautiful. Thanks, guys. So we've got this lovely bit now that we've laid the top and we've created this nice flatterness. So when we take the top and we start to create a longer piece to the front, it's not going to be so weighty. Looks beautiful. And what I want to do now is I'm just going to keep going vertical and I'm going to remove a bit of this weight that we have at the bottom. If you remember, the first section's elevated a bit higher up. So what we're going to do is we're going to come across, but I'm going to be on this side. So I can come through with my fingers here and start to see So Peter has a question. Hey, Peter. And he said, would you not have just round layered that area to begin with? Uh, no, because the problem is I would have lost the squareness. So it's, it's about keeping the strength and the squareness. So, you know, I think when you're really, really good at what you're doing, and maybe I'm not, <laughs> you can go straight in. But for me, I always like to create something very structured first that I can follow and then break it individually. So I always find by breaking it afterwards is much easier for me. You know, it's like, like I said, if you're kind of doing a messy look with the hair up, sometimes it's easier to do it very clean first and then break it, rather than trying to create something messy at first. So this really keeps the squareness, it keeps the corner, it keeps the squareness to the side, but it's just created an internal layer. And, and you still have the graduation yeah. in the bottom. And you also have a chance to see what the weight is looking like. So obviously, I'm going to break it in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think, I think by doing this way, you have a better chance of being able to see how things work. So. For me, until I had created the squareness, I didn't really know how much weight I wanted to remove. Now that I can see it visually with my own eyes, I find it easier. I'm a very visual hairdresser as well, and that's why I can't do color. Because <laughs> if I don't see it, I don't get it. You know, so this one, it kind of like jumps straight at me. I can see it, I can see the corner, I understand it. Um, so I'm a very, very, very visual hairdresser. So, Peter, let us know if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. They can probably tell I didn't finish school now. <laughs> I 
If I see it, I get it. <laughs> Beautiful. So what we're doing is the same thing. We're just removing that corner from here. So we have the length of the top and the length of the bottom. Remember, we cut the bottom, then we cut the top. In the middle, there's a corner, and we're just working through now to remove it. Yes, that makes sense. Thanks. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter. Okay. Well, it's amazing how much this really flattens it out, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, and it makes all the difference. You know, I think sometimes when the bulk is just in the wrong place, it, can, it, it makes the haircut look wrong. And that's why I said working with the head shape. You know, understanding sometimes where weight is important and where weight is not important. So if we were going to also leave it um, and cut the top shorter, then maybe we, we would have been okay if we left it. But the fact that we're going to start to really layer the top over it and it's going to be disconnected. It really means that what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're flattening the sides so the disconnection that's sitting on top isn't sticking out too much, it's flattened into it. Yes, that makes sense. Cool. So, so, what we're going to do is we're going to do a very, very uh, light recap for you guys in a second. Just got one more question. Yeah. Well, that was a good question. Did you look at where the hair will fall at the ears when creating the square back? Yeah, so that's so when you create the back, you have to think of the length you want in the front. So what I did was I actually could visually see that the length I had in the back was the length I was going to have in the front. And what I had to do is think, and you can see it. So if I do like this with the comb, so if I pull the hair out in the back, and I take my comb to the side, what I can do is visually I can start to see the length that I'm going to end up in the front and think is that where I want it to be or not. So you kind of have to visualize from the back and the front where the lengths are that you want to create within the hair. And you know, maybe the first time you do it, it's a little bit harder to visualize, but once you do this a few times, it's fine. And, and on our website, slatehair.com, we have a classic square graduation that we've done. I think it was our second ever hairbrain live. And, and you can see this haircut as a pure graduated technique instead of what I've done here, which is a much more abstract, much more tailored, salon creative haircut. I believe that was on a model as well, wasn't it? Was it was on a model as well, yeah. No, none of this style was stuck <coughs> pre COVID. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that's looking nice. Looking really cool. Yeah, just make sure. Nice and slim in those corners. So we've connected in those slightly longer pieces we had. Cool. So, very quick recap for you guys, and then go on to the top, which is fun. And, uh, cool. So, I'm Mike Pixley is from Slate Hair Education. We have James Akers behind on the camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that we started off with four major zones. So what we had was we found our first corner on the top. Then what we did was we found a corner on one side and then a corner on the other side. And what this did was it gave us these fundamental sections in the back. And so what it did is we separated the side from the back. Okay? So what we had was we had one in the back, two on the side, three on the top, and four on the other side. So it's four sections with five corners. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay? So we have five corners and four zones. What we did was we cut the back flat graduation and then we came across horizontally and we cut it square. What we then did was when we came to the side, we again cut it with flat graduation, but we connected it square. So if we look from top to bottom, we always maintained that squareness within the shape. Okay. After we had done both sides square, flat graduation, we elevated the hair up. We layered it internally. So we removed the weight from the top and then we came through and we connected it from top to bottom, removing a corner that we have here. So we graduated it and then what we did was we layered the top, 
and then we connected it across vertically, removing the weight from the top of the haircut. And now it just sits a bit slimmer, a bit flatter, because we're going to do some nice disconnected long lengths on the top. Hope that makes sense. Let us know if not. We're more than happy to go over it. We're going to do another final recap at the very end when I've dried it. And so we've got this really cool long lens to play with. Hi right, guys, just just let me know if you can hear better now because I've def I've been very careful with my hands. So let me know. It might be the speaker. Let me know if you can hear better now. I need to stop screaming a little bit more. <laughs> I'm Greek. We're supposed to be loud. <laughs> So just making sure it's nice and wet. All right. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be creating a nice, very, very slightly triangle layer through the top. What's going to happen is the back is going to be connected. So we're going to use the back as a guideline. And what we're going to do is we're going to have it disconnected from the sides. And this is just going to live over the top, leaving a softness and that kind of swept bangs, swept fringe. Cool. So we're separating it by creating a nice uh, section through the top, vertical section through the top. Gracias por tu excelente expresión soy de Argentina. I imagine that means thank you for your excellent explanation from Argentina. I think you can speak Spanish. So, <laughs> there we go. we're just taking a nice centre section through the front, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be connecting it through now. So, using the back as a guideline, we lift the hair up, and you can see the length at the back is our guideline, and we're going to start to connect it through the top. So that's going to be our length now. So from the back, on the vertical, everything's connected. And we're just going to work straight across here. So again, just lifting the hair up and looking to connect it across. So it's going to be slightly longer in the front. Slightly longer in the front because we want to have that nice swept fringe. So we want to keep that a little bit more length towards the front. Beautiful. Cool. So what I do is I always kind of like to try and cut. If I've cut from the back to the front, I like to cut from the front to the back. Just make sure that I've kept everything nice and flat and I haven't missed any bits. Bina says, perfect explanation. So nice work. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. So what we're doing is we're going to take parallel sections just some nice parallel sections working through. I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to be connecting in the back and disconnecting in the front. So the disconnection is going to happen from the sides. So this is all blended at the moment. But what's going to happen is as we see the sides are cut very short, it's going to end up being disconnected from the top to the sides. Guys, if you have any questions, please don't worry, hesitate to ask us. Yeah. Michael's here to answer all your questions. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, please like and share the video. Exactly. Don't forget to let us know where you're tuning in from. We always love to hear where in the world you are. What time is it? What's the weather like? We had <laughs> snow in London, which is magical. It's really beautiful, isn't it? Very cold, but very beautiful. <laughs> So we're currently in lockdown at the moment, so we're not doing any clients. So the dolls are what's keeping us sane at the moment, <laughs> keeping us company on those cold nights. <laughs> Gorgeous. So what are you doing here as far as over direction goes, side so to side? What slightly are you... to the previous, so just slightly more central to the previous. So each one's going slightly to the previous. Now, the truth is what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be uh, rounding this off afterwards. So even though right now I'm doing something a little bit more square, it's just for safety. It's just for safety and balance. And what I'll be doing is afterwards, I'll be removing that 
and I'll be creating something that is actually going to be um, a little more rounded. So the layer at the top is going to be just a little bit more rounded afterwards. So, um, at the end. so it's from, from, from front to back, it's going to be a little bit triangular, but from left to right, it's going to be a little bit rounded at the end. So right now I'm cutting something square so that I have a chance afterwards to decide how much of the corner I'm going to remove. So it comes back to what I think Peter asked. Why don't you just do round straight away? Well, for me, it just gives me a little bit more control of what I'm creating, and it allows me to choose how much of the corner I'm going to remove afterwards. So just a little bit more control. Did you use any gel or product to make the hair sectioning haircut better? Yeah, I used a little bit of the leave-in conditioner from Milkshake. I'll show you what that is. I've got it right here. I'll give it a little twist for you. So that's what we tend to use when we're when we're working on these dolls. It just gives us a little bit more control. So that's the one side done. You can see that it's got that slightly longer length in the front as well. What we'll do now is we'll do the second side. And after we finish the second side, we're going to slightly round the top and then we're done and we're going to start doing a nice dry for you. And uh, after the dry, it will just be a tiny bit of refinement and a recap and we're done. Beautiful. So, again, so you're standing now on the opposite side. Is there a reason for that? Yeah, you just have a tendency always as hairdressers to pull hair towards yourself. And so by standing on the opposite side, what you're doing is you're encouraging yourself to over-direct the hair a little bit more central, a little bit more towards yourself, which in turn allows you to create something a little bit more square. So if we were going for something that was technically very square, it would be very important to stand on the side I'm standing on because you have a tendency to pull the hair more towards yourself. Beautiful. So guys, if you're liking what you see, please like and share the video. If you have any questions, please ask away. Yeah. So it's a nice little pixie variation, but you can do so many different uh, types of looks with this same kind of section and pattern. There's absolutely no reason why you can't mix it up. And so that's what we really like. We like the fact that you can take this haircut and mix it up however you want to create a whole new genre of, of, of haircuts for yourself. So I think by learning these classic round, square, triangle, line, layers, graduation, it does allow you to be a little bit more creative even, but having a better understanding of what you're doing and why. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come, so if we come over here, James, what you can see is actually, from here we can see that it's disconnected. So we can see that from what we've cut underneath, the top is disconnected. I don't know how well you can see that. So that's disconnected. So what we want to do here is we want to just point into it a little bit and just soften it. Because this is going to sit over the top of that. And what we're doing is we're starting to round it a little bit. And we just want to cut a little bit off. And that is going to start to round that layer that we've done through the top. So that's cool. That's going to blend a little bit nicer. And then we do the other side. So again, the same thing. We're coming over and we're just starting to layer through. And so this is creating a little bit more roundness within that top layer we've created. So Coral says, I like it. Nice cut, winky face. Nice. There you go. Love the winky face. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing, guys. We really appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. That means the world. So what we're doing is we've done the top now, and we've created something which is a little bit more triangular. And what we're going to come over is we're going to create something a little bit more rounded. Because we cut the top, and now we've cut the two sides, it's actually created a little bit of a corner in the middle. Because remember, when you cut one place, and you cut the other, you're going to find a corner in the middle, and you don't really want the weight there. So we're just going to come through, and we're going to find the corner. Now, <laughs> corners, you can remove them through different ways. You can use uh, blunt cutting, or you can come through and just point it if you want it a little bit softer, a little bit more shattered, especially when you're using what I use now, which is disconnection from the top to the bottom. If you cut it blunt, sometimes it doesn't blend as well. A lot so, of people are saying beautiful cut, very beautiful. 
Thank you. You're talking about me, right? <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. So if you like what you see, check out our website, slatehair.com. We have free education videos. We have the free videos that we've done on Hairbrain, the catalog in one place. We have 15 free videos right now, but we're uploading new ones every week starting this week. So That's you'll great. get a real big one as well. We also do our Slate Lives. And those will start to be uploaded each month as well. So Magda, if you just wait till Michael finishes this section, then he's going to recap the whole haircut for you. Yeah. Okay, so you'll be able to see what he did at the back. Do you use pointing a lot, Michael? Uh, not so much, but it's really <laughs> dependent on what I'm doing. I think pointing is great if you have a reason for it. So right now, my reasoning is because I've created disconnection and I want it to blend. So when you're trying to create internal disconnection and you want it to blend, point cutting is a really fantastic technique. What I don't like is when people point cut just to make their work blend uh, because they're trying to create a clean cut, but they don't know the technique of it. So this way, it just gives you a nice little soft cut. Cool. So let me recap what I've done for you as well, and then we'll move on to the drying. Beautiful. So it's a little bit of a pixie variation. What we've done is we've created nice flat graduation in the back, nice flat graduation on the sides. We've cut this using square cutting angles. So the back was cut square and the sides was cut square. So all the way through this haircut, come from the top here, we have square on either side and we have square in the back. And it was all cut in a graduated cutting angle across. So there are some corners, so if you look at the haircut, maybe you can see there's a little bit of weight in this corner area where we've created a little bit of weight in the middle of the corner. After that, what we did was we separated the top and we created a nice little bit of internal layering. So we lifted the hair up on the inside and we created a nice shorter layer internally and then we connected this on the vertical across as well. So just from removing that corner, but it's still weighty and blended in the back. After that, we created a nice flat layer through the top, connecting from the back. So the back was the bad line, and we connected it through the top. And then we brought everything up and we connected it in. We then rounded this off by cutting the hair on the sides, cutting the hair on the other side. And then just removing the corner with the point cutting you saw me doing now. Now time to dry. Beautiful. So how would you tend to dry one of these um, so haircuts? I like to put a little bit of this 12, um, incredible number 12 effects. So that one's the first the primer. I then put a little bit of the blow dry primer as well. That's got a little bit of hold, which is great for these dolls, the dolls isn't it? Have, you know, and I think hold on a doll is very important as well. So I have another two secret products that I put in as well, apart from the primer. One of my favorite products is this whipped cream, which literally smells like whipped cream. It's amazing. <laughs> so you really want to eat it every time. <laughs> so this is almost like a even conditioner, but it also makes the hair supple, soft, easy to manage, really nice to use. So once we've primed the hair, we can then start to blow dry it. Beautiful. I feel like it's one of those haircuts which you could use in lots of different, you could style in lots of different ways that would look cool. This is one that, you know, you can really let the hair dry naturally and it looks cool. You can really dry it very smooth and straight and it looks cool. It's because it's got a strong structure it's a strong looking haircut you can dry it straight or messy and it looks cool as well so i think that's something that's really important well, eco cuts say nice dennis said nice i enjoyed your talents Thank joshua you. said bravo 
The shape looks great, Michael. Thank you. Really cool. Thank, Thank you, Monica. So right now we're just blow drying things left and right, up and down. What would you call this? This is a wrap dry. So we're just wrapping the hair around the head shape by going left and right. Evelyn said, I love you, Michael. You are great. Oh, thanks, Evelyn. Thanks. Good job. A lot of comments coming in for you. Yeah, good, 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 good. So, guys, although this isn't always the most exciting part to watch, it's so important, I think, to have a really nice blow dry when you're doing these dolls. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. It's always like when you're doing a hair brain live, you're like, yeah, this is definitely the most boring part, and I'm very sorry. Please keep watching. <laughs> I know it's probably more interesting to go on Instagram for a little bit, but it definitely is a, a, a very important part of it. And I think when, when a lot of people want to be educators, and unfortunately a big part of it is working on dolls, and it is about how well you can blow dry these dolls as well. Because if you do the world's best haircut, but you don't really blow dry it properly, they can look quite bad as well. So it's, it's all part of it. Being a good hairdresser is actually understanding how to dry your haircut as well, I believe. Absolutely. It's beautiful as you dry it, you can really start to see the shape forming. Make sure you ask her if you're her. No? Yeah. <laughs> so Joshua said this weekend was the ISSE show in Long Beach, California. Yeah. And it was so nice to receive education today, this very different year. Uh, Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Thanks so much, Josh. It's been really an amazing year. It feels like I'm more connected and disconnected to the world at the same time, I think, this year. Because we've done so much online, you feel very connected to everyone, but we really miss all of our friends abroad that we haven't seen in person either. So I feel like it's interesting. I think mean, it's, it's kind of made us all appreciate each other a little bit more, which I think is really important. So a couple of other questions. Yeah. Um, does it matter which type of brush you use for this yeah. blow dryer? So for me, I use a very small, the seven row, because I feel like the bigger the brush is, the more volume you get. And volume can be really nice if you want it, and I don't want it. Um, on a doll, a lot of the time the volume doesn't really look as nice on dolls. So I always find going for something that creates a little bit more flatness is better. Do you love the Dyson blow dryer? Uh, I love it for dolls. I don't really like it on clients, to be honest. I feel like it doesn't give as much strength. So, you know, I'm Greek, so we have a lot of Greek clients sometimes. <coughs> and their hair is so strong and thick, it can be quite hard. But you like it a lot, don't you? Jim? I like it, yeah. So I guess it's personal preference, like yeah. everything, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So do you have any tips with drying the dolls as opposed to drying humans? Is there yeah. any parts you'd focus on more? Yeah, or? just the hairlines always keep them as flat. If you see what I'm doing, I'm actually holding it onto the skin and I'm really trying to get that as flat as possible. Because really, uh, on the dolls, like I said, I think sometimes the flatter it is, the better it looks. Yeah. So for me, it's always about getting them a little bit flatter on the dolls than you would normally on a human. Really cool, Mike. Do you tend to use irons very much when doing uh, things like this? I don't really like to use irons. 
Um, I find that it makes the hair a bit too straight, and I think once you've straightened it already with a, with a vest brush, it's already quite straight, so I don't want to make the poker straight or stick out. So just by using uh, the, the vest brush to me is enough, but I think it's personal preference. You know, whatever you like to use is fine. Whatever effects you want is fine. I guess that's where you can bring a bit of personality yeah. into it, isn't it? Yeah, with, your, sure. with your finishing. So guys, if you have any questions, not just about this haircut, but any haircut, or about us at Slate, please don't hesitate to ask. We're here for any questions that you have. Thank you to those of you that follow all our videos. We really appreciate it. John says, loving this, guys. Thank you. But Brooke said, what's your advice or tips for new stylists? Yeah, I mean, I would say really learn as much as you can from the people around you as well as online. You know, when you work in a salon, you're surrounded by people. And so, you know, for me, I would say I'm very lucky where I had some really strong mentors in life. And not only that, I was in a really nice salon that had a lot of different people working there that had trained in different places. Some used to work at Sassoon, some used to work at Tony and I. And you can really gain a lot from seeing the people around you and seeing how they work. And so you might like the way that one person talks to their client. And you might like the way that another person approaches their sectioning or takes their graduation. And I think, you know, it's all around you. Don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid to communicate with your team and see how, you know, they work, ask them questions. And I think that's something that's really, really great is, you know, you can learn so much. And hairdressers, you know, we love talking about hair. I think it's important to surround yourself with people that inspire you. Yeah, exactly. You know? Uh, Christine said, what was the website? So it's slatehair.com. So I know it's very shabby, guys. Don't judge me for my phone. But we have slatehair.com. So if you go on slatehair.com, or you just type slate hair in Google, you'll find us there. Cool. So we're coming to the end now. I'm just going to try and lift this doll up and do a tiny bit of refinement as well. Shape looks great. Sense. It's beautiful. Up we go. Up we go. <laughs> yeah, nice. So what I'll do is I'll just do a very, very touch on the outlines, and then I'll give you guys a really quick recap, and we're done. Perfect. John said, very cool, but easily translates into a more commercial salon look. Yeah. Hello from Toronto, nice shape. Thank you. Thank you. Francesco's put the website down there, guys, so you can just click that link and you go straight to it. Cool. So obviously this is quite clean the way I've done it, but you can always mess it up if you want, make it something a little bit more textured as well, which is always fun. Cool. So really, with the outlines, I mean... Uh, <laughs> I don't really mind it, I quite like the outlines the way they are now, but you can always just tweak a little bit if you want. If it's a bit too clean, you can always just go in and just break it up ever so slightly, make it something a little bit more commercial, a little bit more broken within the outlines as well. So 
I really hope you guys have enjoyed it today. It's been a blast for us. You know, we, we do lives every month. And we really just love the Hairbrain community. It's always been a pleasure to kind of be with everyone and feel connected to everyone, even in this crazy time that we're all together. So, you know, really thank you so much to everyone for having us, as always, to Hairbrain for having us. And yeah, please, if you guys have enjoyed this, like and share for us. You know, we really appreciate it. We're just leaving some very, very, like, touch of softness in places as well. So this haircut can obviously be done even shorter, longer. It really depends on what you want to achieve. Going a little bit shorter internally will create a much more tailored, much more pixie feel to it. A little bit longer creates that nice, soft and elegant look. And you can always braid it up more as well. But as a very, very, very quick last recap, very flat graduation in the back, very flat graduation on the sides, created a nice square graduation throughout the whole thing. We took two disconnected internal panels inside and cut them short, and then we did this nice flat, slightly triangular layer through the top. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. It's been a blast. I'm Michael Pitts from Slave Education. Thanks for tuning in, guys. See you next month for our next live.